All right, so Keith, this one's for you. You and another guy, you were the first one to ask. Y'all have asked the paint booth, what's the size of it? You wanna build your own? You want dis dimensions of it? I'm gonna give you the whole quick rundown uh, as fast as I can of how basically everything works in case you're not familiar with a paint booth and how mine is set up. Let's dive right into it. All right, so I had a couple of y'all ask me about the paint booth, the dimensions, about building one, and I just wanted to kind of do a quick run over of uh, the paint booth. So let's start out real fast. The width of the booth, from side to side, you're going to be 14 feet. You're going to be 14 feet on your width, and then your length, 23 feet. 23 feet on your length. Your exhaust, 44 inches, so a little under four foot on your exhaust filters, that's double of them. And then the width is roughly two foot, so roughly two foot by four foot on the exhaust, and then each filter, each filter is 20 by 20 inches. And I'll show you this, so your filters openings and the filters that you buy, or that I use, is 20 by 20. So these are just fiberglass filters, as you can see. These are what we call the exhaust filters, okay? So each one is 20 by 20, you get them in a box. If you're gonna order it off Amazon or eBay, you'd be looking for exhaust filters for paint with fiberglass. Um, these up here, these boxes up here, are plywood. Uh, exhaust filters do go there, but to cut down some of the airflow, it was flowing too much when I first got this booth, so I blocked them off. When you do it to test your airflow, if you're flowing too much, you can cover it with cardboard, you know, and figure out, basically, make it smaller. Some people will probably say that if you choke it down smaller, it's gonna move it faster, um, but then it can move less. It can suck less into it. So it, you're just gonna have to play it around with your setup because there's not gonna be a one way fits all. The intake filters, let me take measure. Your intake filters are also gonna be 20 by 20s. But these are intake filters, so this side's white. This is not a fiberglass, it's more, it feels more like a, uh, a coarse foam of some type, like an acoustic foam almost. And then the green side is actually sticky when they're brand new. So you'll actually feel it on your fingers. Um, that's to made so trash will come in and then any tiny particles that make it through all that will get stuck in the sticky residue on the filters. As these wear out and they lose their stickiness, um, you start to get more in there. Uh, under the bottom of my doors, I, have, uh, I do have a crack. So I actually have an old bed sheet. Uh, we've went through multiple towels and stuff like that. We wet it, roll it up, and tuck it on the outside to keep it from underneath there. Um, these were filter holes that I put glass in to get some light in. And so I can see out of when I'm painting uh, what my guys are doing or if my guys need me or if I need them. I can see, you know, when I'm hollering for them, I can see what's going on about there. And you got that little one. Um, you have all these lights. Okay, these are all glass, basically ex explosion proof. These are glassed and sealed up so the fixtures are on the outside. Um, I have one air hose that comes in. I just simply drilled a hose through and used that. The hose that I use is a Flexzilla. If you Amazon or eBay Flexzilla, um, it doesn't kink or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about um, cutting off air supply. I mean, you can kink it if you purposely do it. But yeah, Flexzilla hose inside the booth. Uh, we actually do have speakers in the booth on this one. I put them in and uh, we don't use them no more, but we have a sound bar, this Bluetooth. So anytime you're painting and we just ran the wire outside, you can link your phone to the Bluetooth and you can pretty rock out pretty good in here with the echo pretty loud um, while you're painting. You don't have to have earbuds in and all that mess. Uh, I got two paint stands by the door. Uh, this one is type that your cup sits in here and then the gun rests there. This one's a hanging one. A lot of times this is the only one I use and this one hangs a bunch of junk off of it as you can see. Put two shelves in the corner here to cheat on the fire code. So fire code says that all of your paint has to be in an explosion proof 
uh, room or anytime you mix paint it has to be an explosion proof room so to cheat that code and not have to purchase a an explosion proof room if you'll put you some shelves in here and when they go do the inspection or fire marshal come by or anything you have some paint in here you say that you do all your mixing and everything in here because this is an explosion proof room because it does have a fire suppression system up there that would go off if anything caught on fire that goes outside um even though my paint is in the little room that I built, that's climate controlled that we mix in, this still does give me an answer. And they have got on me about where I store my paints. Uh, they wanted an explosion proof container, even though I don't do that, but this is a good way. Or one of the PPG reps had told me back in the day, if you just set you up a little table and you know put you some stuff on there, then it kind of gives you that loop to claim that you mix in here. The uh, paint or the exhaust goes into here goes up into this whole stack. This is a giant uh, opening in here. It's hollow It goes out and then this is the access hole. So we did have a water leak coming down from the ceiling down the exhaust stack and it was dripping in the middle of a paint job on the hood at one time. So I had put this tape here to get the water far enough away. And then I sealed all this up to make sure that no dust comes out. But when I did put the booth together, I did silicone everything or not silicone. You actually have to use something that's not uh, uh, silicone based but it's like silicone and a lot of it's actually split since it was shrunk, but everything was caulked up tight, not silicone. Very important if you're building a booth or put a booth together, not use a silicone product because it can contaminate your uh, paint job. No, uh, like the door hinges squeak on this door, but we can't put WD-40 on it because WD-40 or tire shine will absolutely ruin a paint job. And uh, just it being in the air will fish eye and contaminate it. Also, diesel fumes sometimes can really mess up a paint job if they're being sucked in. Kerosene, I run a kerosene heater on the outside of the booth and uh, I adjust the distance it is from the door. And that, like if it's really close to the door, then it's a ton of heat coming in. But if it's far away from the door, then it's mixing with cold air and the heat. So you can kind of actually turn your temperature up and down in here by the distance you move your heater away. And it doesn't mess with the paint at all. The kerosene, or di we actually burn diesel fuel. I guess it's so hot uh, from being burnt off that it doesn't mess with anything. But if you have like a diesel truck idling, I have heard of people um, having issues with contamination in paint. I've never experienced it, but that is a pointer. Um, you know, like if you have a diesel shop next door or something. So the fire suppression system is plumbed through there. It goes through here and the chains hanging from the ceiling, in case anybody asks about that, they actually come down. They just unhook right up here. They come swing down and we hang bumpers or whatever on them, a heavy door. If you need to hang something to paint versus it laying flat on the stand because I am a budget painter and I don't buy big fancy paint stands. So the fire suppression system is around here. I do keep all my uh, paint stands on the wall. Um, this is your fire suppression system. It's supposed to be serviced all the time. Uh, we're probably way out of date, but it goes up and it goes into the booth. These are all lines for the fire suppression system. Also, um, you have a, I don't even know what that is. I'm not even gonna lie, but you have a little box up here that if something was to happen, you can actually break and pull it to ignite the booth, uh, manually. Um, the, my compressor is out back. I have, I think an 80 gallon it's plumbed to come into the shop and then it comes down, feeds the booth separate. There's nothing else that pulls off of this line. This T goes back near the frame rack and then this T goes up, services everything else. So when it comes in, where does it come in? At? I think it actually comes in over here. Yeah. I think it comes in down there and it comes here and, and tees off that way. But basically this is unregulated. There's no, uh, nothing stopping it between here and the compressor to mess with the air so it's just full-blown pressure from the compressor here and then you have a regulator on your filter here this filters for water so if we open it as you can see i haven't drained it that's your water and then this is what a lot of people refer to as a toilet paper Filter, uh, it comes with the foam you can actually put in here, but there's actually a roll of toilet paper inside here. Um, I don't want to open it up right now because actually, let's see here. Yeah, if we uncharge that. I'm not even going to open it because it's been a minute, but there's legit toilet paper inside there. Um, that comes off of, hose is tight, comes off of here, goes into the booth, that's your airline. So your air comes into here, goes here. 
um, it's important to have some distance before it hits the filter so it can cool down so i have all this hose cooled up because this is what i had left over is some old hose that was damaged that i cut uh and just used a hose clamp to get it in here that helps it cool because it's going to be hot coming in from the compressor that helps it cool way down before it hits this and then when it cools that's what makes your condensation and then it goes to that and that filters th through it even more uh this gets the water out this gets the oils out of the air if there is any in there and then that goes into the booth but it's important to have some distance between your compressor and your first filter so it can cool down um Besides that, that's pretty much it. Let's go back here. Fire marshal would actually be mad because there's not a lot of room around the booth. Um, I still had the booth pulling too much air, so I actually cut a giant hole out of the back of my booth. Um, they had When I bought it used, somebody already had this little thing in here to help suck some air, uh, take some suction off of the booth, but it was flowing too much. So I literally just cut a giant freaking hole and then i braced it up with some two by fours and screws through it it's pretty redneck but i've come from a construction background and then there's your giant stack so i know you think you can see sunlight through there and you can but it's actually a clear roof sealant um, that is poured on around that we actually had a roofing company come out and seal the stack up that goes through there but there's your stack so that's the inside of the booth but this definitely helps kill some of the airflow so that the booth is not sucking so hard so if you have the booth sucking too hard then what happens is it's pulling in uh at so so aggressive that it's uh stirring up dust and every time you open this door if the booth is on then when you open this door it uh kicks dirt up off the floor or sucks dust in it's just it's just sucking way too hard you're on and off switch is always gonna be on your outside not the inside unless you have an explosion proof box uh, by fire code the uh, this is not an explosion proof box so it is wired to the outside so that we could get our um, inspection done i thought about moving it to the inside again but i don't if i ever need to cut it on and off with me in there i just holler at one of the employees to come and switch it off for me um, besides that that's pretty much it like i said it's important to make sure it's all sealed up and then inside when we put this together we did put some row, uh, foam seal inside here but some of this boost actually out of square so it doesn't seal up great and next when i'm if i move it or the next one i put together i've learned a lot and i will make sure i get it all square that's in line when i did like randy's job or very very high-end job which is maybe one a year um i actually just tape my door shut besides my little man door and i know some people are going to ask about the carpet so originally when i built the booth um it was painted the floors were all nice and painted and then I actually was, I'm in some painters groups and a lot of people got talking about carpet. This is just regular uh, indoor outdoor carpet that you can buy from Home Depot or Lowe's. There's a piece of it. Um, and supposedly what it does is it helps any airflow coming from there or when you open the door, uh, you basically your air rushes in like this. And you know, of course, then this air is rushing this way. So it often creates a loop of air and that stirs dust up. Um, you can actually see the plastic move on the vehicles when you open the door. So it's stirring dust up. So what it does is the outdoor carpet allows your dirt and dust to go down into the fibers and then kind of stay nestled down in there so that it doesn't stir it up into the air. And then you can actually vacuum this. Um, I painted for like three years with a, a painted floor and it was an absolute nightmare uh we would have to sweep it after every single job practically um with it not being a downdraft so much stuff was settled on the floor it was just when you swept it it was just so disgusting the floors just turned dirty the carpet is amazing so with the carpet you can actually and if you lay down on that floor to tape something it would be all over your clothes with the carpet before you do a job you can vacuum it we do have a cheap vacuum cleaner that we keep and um, you can actually lay on this and not get your clothes dirty after it's been vacuumed. Even though it looks disgusting, it's, uh, it's the stuff that's on the top comes up with the vacuum and then the stuff that's down in there is deep enough where it doesn't come out and get on you. So uh, highly recommend the carpet. A lot of people are going to say you've lost your freaking mind, uh, but I promise it works and there's a lot of other people out there that do it. Um, you know, and, and now you know why. If you have any more questions, let me know. Uh, this was to help out, uh, you know, some of y'all that's been asking about it. Hopefully it helps you build yours or hopefully it helps you understand how a paint booth works.